Welcome back to my channel. If you are new, my name is Rachel Alma and I'm back with another recipe. I was thinking about what I could share with you guys that is nutritious, tasty, delicious, and hopefully stuff that you guys will have at home. So the inspiration behind this recipe is like an Ital curry. So we're, we're feeding the body, feeding the soul today. So what's really simple about this is you can use anything, any vegetables you have in the house, whether it is butternut squash, potatoes, carrots, peppers, anything you have. What I found personally when I have gone food shopping at this very, very crazy time, the fresh vegetables are still at the shop. So hopefully you guys have some and then we can make this really delicious curry. So please give this video a thumbs up if you're excited. Don't forget to subscribe for new videos every week and let's make food. So let's get everything we need to get. So first of all, we're gonna get all our, our whatever you have in the fridge. We're going in the fridge, we're hunting today. I just want to I just want to shout out my camera woman today. I've got Mumsy helping me today. Last week's camera person, they're creating some incredible things right now and they'll be back next week, but this week we've got the incredible beautiful superhero mum of mine. So the vegetables that I found in my house, I've got a courgette, a sweet potato, a uh, butternut squash, regular potato, I've got two carrots, and I've also got this red chili. It's kind of wrinkling, which means it's gonna be nice and hot and spicy. It is technically on the way out, but we're just gonna get more heat from it. Especially because with something like this, I would wanna use a scotch bonnet pepper. I just, I don't have scotch bonnet. So we're making this with what you have in the house. And now we wanna add some like protein, so a bean, and I've got a lot of tin beans. <laughs> For my protein, I've got some black-eyed peas. You can use chickpeas, butter beans, cannellini beans, kidney beans, black-eyed peas, lentils, whatever you have, whatever your favorite protein source is. Um, then I've got some coconut milk and some chopped tomatoes. I would usually want to use fresh tomatoes for something like this. I just don't have any, and especially at times like this, if you manage to get a hold of some tin tomatoes, the liquid gold, then we're sorted. Oh, I nearly forgot ginger. Ginger is essential. Also, it's that time where you want to kind of look after your body. And ginger is one of my favorite ingredients for just, what do you call it, mum? What's the benefits of ginger? Go on, just say it. She's scared to talk. Go on, tell me. She's my nutritionist. She's gone pause. She's gone shy. <laughs> mum, tell me, what's ginger good for? <laughs> Ginger is anti-inflammatory and it's gonna clear out some toxins and I love the punch it gives to any curry so I go heavy on the ginger. So I managed to actually find some scallions, some green onions, some spring onions. There's like three different names for them. They're clearly on the way out but we're gonna salvage what we can and add it in. Then ginger and garlic. So we're gonna roughly, 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 roughly start to chop up all the veg that we're gonna put in there and we're gonna put that in a separate bowl. Then we're gonna chop up the onions, the garlic, and the ginger, and we're gonna cook those off first, and then we're gonna add everything. So just roughly chop up your courgette. And then I'm just gonna pop those in a bowl. Then I've got my carrot, and I'm just gonna take the skins off. You can keep them on as well, um, especially if they're organic. So I like to cut my carrots a little bit smaller than everything else because they do take a bit longer to cook. I don't want a hard carrot. I like them a little bit soft. Tiny little bite, but still soft. Sweet potato, I'm just gonna peel the skin off. So when it comes to my potatoes, because I'm using sweet potato and regular potato, I do find that the sweet potato takes quicker to cook than a regular potato. So if you wanna be really finicky about it, you can make your sweet potato now I'm getting so confused. Now you make your sweet potato bigger than the size you chop your regular potato if you want them to cook around the same time. But you don't have to be really finicky if you don't want to be. But what we will get is that the potato is going to thicken up the curry at the end and make it really delicious. And then I've got my regular potato. And guys, you can get as creative. You can sub out different vegetables depending on what you love and what you have. Mm. 
So then I've got a butternut squash. I'm gonna use about half of the butternut squash and just peel the outside. Then with the seeds inside, it's up to you. You can reuse them if you want to. Um, you can roast them. So then I'm gonna roughly chop up my butternut squash and I like to chop it around the same size as a sweet potato. I find that if I cut them too small, they get quite mushy quite quickly and I do not like mushy squash. I've got these beautiful, delicious vegetables, courgette, sweet potato, carrot, regular potato, butternut squash. As I said, anything you have, if you have some aubergines, you have some red peppers. Um, also, if you have kale, spinach, cavallero, stuff like that, you can add those in at the last second. I don't actually think I have any. If I do have some, we're gonna add some. But for now, oh, we do, mum's giving me the cosign. We have some kale, no, we don't have kale. We have spinach. We have cavallero, that's one of my favorites. Okay, amazing. So now we're going to chop up the aromatics, so the ginger, the chilli, the onions and the garlic because we're going to cook those off first in the pot. So I'm doing the spoon trick, spoon trick, spoon trick with the ginger. Some people don't have time for this but um, I think it's the best way to do ginger personally. I feel like with the knife you end up chopping away a lot of garlic, garlic, ginger, that you didn't have to. So the spoon just gets rid of that top layer, it is a bit messy but you don't waste as much ginger. Or just keep the skins on if that's how you like to move. And then I'm just gonna roughly chop up this chili. Then our red onion. <laughs> cool, we're gonna try and salvage these um, spring onions. The tops, oh, dropping them. Um, do you guys like to call them scallions, spring onions? We're just gonna take off the straggly bits at the top that have kind of died and are a bit sad and they won't bring us much flavor or nutrients. Cool. So we're gonna just finally chop these. <laughs> I'm probably not gonna use this much spring onion now, but we're gonna use a good amount, maybe like three, and maybe we'll garnish them. I'll taste it and see how it tastes. See how fresh they are. Well, they're not that fresh, are they? Now I'm gonna cook these off in some coconut oil. So I've got my pot here, um, put it to heat, adding in some coconut oil. If you don't cook with oil, you can saute these in water. I always say that because there's always someone that says, can you cook without oil? So my solution, you can saute in water. Once the oil has melted and we've got a little bit of heat, we're then gonna saute these bad boys and then we're gonna add in some really fun, delicious spices. That's going to make it very flavorful. While we're going to let that sizzle cook, smell amazing, we're going to get the spices. I have my special spice drawer over here. Can we say this is where the magic happens? Is that a force? Rosemary, cinnamon, fennel, mustard, cardamom, cloves, cardamom. Ooh, we've got some curry powder, just what I want. And I also want to add in some thyme, which is somewhere. This is an organic curry powder. So this is a cheat, because um, really you'd want to use like your own like five, four, three mix spices. But in here, what do we have? We have Coriander, turmeric, mustard, cumin, cayenne, garlic, pepper, ginger, and bay. So we are sorted in flavorings. And then on top of that, I've got some thyme. Um, sometimes we do have some fresh in the garden, we just don't at the minute. Then a vegetable stock. You can use your favorite vegan friendly vegetable stock. And that's what's gonna help bring some flavor. And of course, we're gonna put some salt and black pepper into the mix with everything. It's just gonna be amazing. I'm mixing in the ginger and red peppers, and this is so colorful and delicious. It's starting to soften, so at this point, season with some salt. And then I'm gonna add in two teaspoons of the curry. So I say two heaping teaspoons. And I'm gonna add in some thyme. Mix that together. So if it starts to stick to the pan like it is a little bit here, 
we're gonna add in some water you could add in more oil i just find i prefer to like get a little bit of water splash it out get the seasoning together get the caramelization and it just lifts all that flavoring off the pan I kind of feel like adding in a little bit more curry. I like a lot of flavour, so we're going to add in a little bit more. So we've cooked down the onions, the ginger, the chilies, spring onions, we've put the curry in there, it smells so, so, so delicious. Now that they've cooked down, we're going to add in all our lovely vegetables and we're going to mix them in with the curry. I feel like I should really take in bets whether we think today Rachel's pot is too big or not too big for the rest of the curry because we've still got to add in the black eyed peas and the liquids. What, what are the votes guys? Am I going to need to do a bigger pot because we know that's what normally happens but I really don't want to because all the flavouring is already in there but let's see what happens. We're going to add in the rest now. <laughs> this is my um, this is my pet peeve about tin tomatoes. It's so it's fine we got a tin opener, but it's just very annoying. Tin tomatoes is gonna go straight in there. Again, I would use fresh if I had fresh. So I got my coconut milk and I'm actually gonna use it all. You could use like half, but for today I just feel like I really wanna get that. What do you call it? The coconut milk and the, and the fat in there really lubricates all these vegetables and makes it extra tasty on the tongue. So I'm going to add it all. Oh, <laughs> this would be perfect for whipping into a um, cream. And the coconut milk is just going to start to melt down and mix in with everything. And then I've got um, some vegetable stock, which I'm just going to crumble in. I'm going to add a pinch of water. Then you just want to kind of bring it to a boil to get it all to heat up. Then I've got my black eyed peas. Again, you could use kidney beans, chickpeas, whatever beans you like. So I've added in some black pepper. I always feel like black pepper and turmeric like go hand in hand. It's kind of like peanut butter to jelly. They work together. The black pepper helps bring out nutrients in the turmeric. And especially this time of year with everything that's going on, turmeric, ginger, anti-inflammatory, superfoods. I'm gonna use that word. I hope people hate that word. Maybe I shouldn't use that word. Let's call them magical foods for your system. Um, it smells amazing. I'm going to let that cook, let that simmer, let the potatoes soften up and they're going to thicken up the curry, make it really, really tasty. We're cooking it with love, guys. So we're going to let that simmer, make some sides and one pot, we're done. So to go with it, I've got some quinoa. I've got mixed quinoa. So it's red, black, white quinoa. I don't know if it's called white quinoa. I just call it quinoa. Um, and I've rinsed it, I gave it a really good wash. You wanna make sure you wash your grains before you cook with them. And there's different ways to season it. So you could um, add in some of the coconut milk that we used earlier, but we used it all up, so that's not an option. You could add vegetable stock, or you could just add a little bit of salt. You could also add different spices, but because we're making a really spicy curry, I just want a nice light quinoa. So we're just gonna mix that in double the amount of water. So I'm just gonna add in a pinch of salt and then you wanna bring it to a boil once it's started to boil, pop the lid on, let it cook until it's nice and fluffy. But something like this, I do wanna have a salad as well, but there is a special ingredient that I have in the fridge, right? You guys who know me, you know what I'm talking about. Two halves. We've got two halves, they're in the fridge because um, we cooked them not realizing there was still a half left. Um, we've got one very white, which is going to be nice and sweet, and one which is going to be a little bit more starchy, which is still going to be sweet as well. So we're going to chop these, they're going to complement everything, as well as a fresh salad, and this is your meal, just yum. Cool. 
So the curry has cooked. We've got some nice fluffy quinoa. Have a look. Um, what happens is it thickens up with the potatoes and what I actually like to do sometimes is I'll get like a bit of the potato and I'll squash it and then I mix that in and then it helps thicken up the sauce. That's why it's nice and thick like this. I've added some coriander on top and some black pepper. And then in here, the quinoa is nice and fluffy. This is how you want it. You don't want to over or undercook it. Nice and fluffy. And then, here's one I made earlier. Um, da, 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 da. So here we have it. I added our plantain. There's the curry. We've got some salad. I added some alfalfa sprouts. They're actually broccoli sprouts. They're really nutritious. Um, cucumber, tomato, quinoa, bit of lemon. Squeeze it on top. Going to bring it to life. Super delicious proper soul food for the body. I hope you guys like this recipe. I will link it down below so you guys can make it. Um, I am about to go and yum this off. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up if you did enjoy the video. Don't forget to hit me up on Instagram, subscribe to my channel. Also, if you haven't seen my cookbook, Rachel Lamb's Vegan Eats, it's got over a hundred of my vegan recipes. So check that out too if you want to see more of my food. And um, I'll see you guys next week. And let me know if there's more recipes that will help you during these times. And I'm um, sending love to everyone watching. Bye.